Okay, hello, greetings and welcome. Now, during a Qigong practice, most people are going to get side effects. They're going to get uh, excesses of energy, and depending what type of energy it is, it's going to work through the nervous system, work through the, the mind, through the feelings, through the body, and uh, generate a range of side effects. As different side effects uh, arise, we, we have different tools for managing these side effects. So if let's say um, you have too much energy passing through your body and you can't sleep, um, normally I would take this as an opportunity to practice through the night. But um, if your schedule doesn't allow for that and your lifestyle doesn't allow for that, then uh, I would take a very hot shower, as hot as you can get it, and totally demagnetize your body with heat, then switch to cold, and then uh, close the body off. And usually this will demagnetize that energy out of the body and reset the body, and, uh, and you'll find that uh, you'll be able to good night sleep after that. If, let's say, your body's overheating, so you put too much energy in and you're getting irritability, uh, heat rashes, um, that your body is just simply too full, you're going to do a cold shower and uh, uh, not a hot shower. So you just get under cold water and, uh, and you just draw the heat out of your body. And uh, you stay in the cold shower in a cold bath or, or jump in the pool or whatever your situation is. And you'd be sensitive to how long it takes to neutralize that excess heat out of your body. If you're finding yourself um, unable to concentrate, daydreaming, your mind's floating, it means the air element in your body's imbalanced. So with the air element, um, you'd be looking at grounding exercises. So you'd be doing something like sinking through the form. Uh, and uh, you do your Tai Chi form with a feeling of grounding yourself out sinking all your energy into the legs and this will uh, balance the mind and stop the floatiness in the mind. Normally when you're looking at a side effect from practice you're, you're, you want to be very sensitive to what the element that's in or out of balance that's excessive or deficient and then approach it from that view. Uh, when you get used to being sensitive to elements in your body, you can just breathe or release that particular element through doing the astral element breathing exercises. So you can increase and decrease the elements uh, according to need. And in that way, you can uh, harmonize the elements. If you're finding um, that uh, you've done a practice session too late in the day and you're fully charged up, you can put that uh, energy into an amulet, into a sacred object, and uh, you just put the object in your hand, put your right hand on top, and then uh, put your mind inside the object, and start breathing into the object, releasing all that excess energy into the object. And will it into the object until you feel your, your mind, your, your body, uh, your astral body, energy body, is clear of that energy, that everything's returned back to a normal pressure. And you'll become very sensitive to these pressures over time that you can tune into them and know exactly where the equanimity point is in your mental astral physical body, whether you need to increase the energy or decrease the energy according to need. <coughs> okay, so um, other side effects um, that you'll get will, will be uh, uh, clairvoyant experiences, um, seeing people's energy fields, seeing the energy around plants and people, seeing uh, ghosts, and, uh, you know, if you're in places like Taiwan, they talk about 40% of the population um, see ghosts regularly or have seen ghosts. So it's a very normal thing when you're in a cultural environment where that's acceptable. Uh, when you practice Qigong, that's going to be amplified. You're naturally going to see things that are beyond the physical because Qigong is energy work. It's working with energy that's beyond the physical. So this becomes a very normal part of um, a Qigong practitioner's experience. So uh, it just means you're training correctly. And uh, if it's a clairvoyant um, quality that you want to increase, use light and fire element. And if you want to decrease it, you do exactly the same. You use light and fire element. If it's clairaudient experience you're working with, you use the air element to increase or decrease it. If it's uh, feeling, use the water element in the water region of your body do your astral breathing exercises to increase it or decrease it. And um, if you need to ground yourself, use the uh, earth elm and earth region, and that'll increase the magnetic fluid between the mental astral and physical body and ground you out. 
increasing your, your, your connection to the physical world and decreasing your openness to the astral world, which will in turn reduce those side effects. So while you're um, uh, experiencing all these different phenomena taking place, it's very important to have a, uh, a non-judgmental openness to your experience. Uh, these, these experiences arise and fall away. There's the cause and the experience is the effect. And there's an energy which brings it into effect. And that energy, if you did nothing, is going to dissipate and the effect is going to disappear. It's not permanent. It's very temporary. And sometimes it's temporary for seconds or minutes. And the energetic balance which is allowing the experience to arise uh, changes and uh, the experience disappears. So it's pretty important to uh, recognize that um, uh, when you have something intense, profound happening to you, it's not going to last very long. If it's something that you want to uh, last longer, you tune into the experience, you anchor the experience, and then you energize the experience in that anchor so that when you hit that anchor, the ritual that you connect to it, uh, you can reactivate that experience and relive it and have it again. So if you're looking to develop clairvoyance and you have a clairvoyant experience, while that clairvoyance is happening, you uh, observe your mental state, you observe your astral state, and you observe your physical state when that experience arose. And you anchor that. And then you reactivate that same alignment <coughs> at a later date when you want to re-experience and continue developing that particular uh, uh, skill set. So um, a lot of things which are initially considered um, side effects are very, very positive um, in the long term. Uh, very often when your body's adapting to new energetic condition, it'll experience chaos. Then it'll equalize with that environment and the chaos will turn into a, uh, a state of balance and uh, uh, the evolution takes place during that transformation, during that adaptation period. So it's to be expected to have these ups and downs when you're training Qigong. Uh, I like to observe the um, uh, side effect, the phenomenon that's taking place, without touching it, just so that I can see what caused it, uh, see what it's doing, see where it's going. So I step a little bit outside of it by creating mental space and watch. And that watching process allows me to understand how and why it's working. It allows me to um, become master of it and have more of it or have less of it according to my will. And, uh, and I find that's a very important um, uh, part of the Qigong journey is that you're the master of your experience. And for you to be the master of your experience, you really need to break down, analyze and understand why things are happening. And, uh, and this is all written in your journal. Every time you train, you fill your journal out. When you want to create a certain effect, you design a process, you investigate it, you practice it, you make it work. And after you've done this for a few dozen different processes, you get a, an intuitive intellect about how Qigong works, how you align the mental, astral, and physical body through different training processes to create different effects. And your journal becomes your teaching manual. It's to teach you, and then it gives you the insight to teach others. So high-quality journaling is very, very important in the Qigong path because it allows you to take experiences metabolize them so that your intellect can make sense of them so that you can improve your process and improve your method uh, without high quality journaling it's difficult to get high quality practice okay so i hope this helps with uh, managing side effects and um, give you some more information about that and uh, we'll see you on the next video thank you for your time